casting magic missile. Why are you casting magic missile? There's nothing to attack here. I, I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. You attack the darkness. Today we're going to be talking about Munchkin Quest. Too, let's open up this big bad box. These nice double-sided room. I believe you get 24 of them. They're double-sided. So, in each room is unique. Assortment of monsters in different sizes. You're going to get like, stuff like this size, medium, which is like the undead horse. The tiny one, which got the, the goldfish, crabs. The huge monster, which is like the pterodactyl. The squat squidzilla. You can get a bag of these coins. Link tiles. All different things. So double sided as well. Hearts. Feet. You can get in the main game you get four different um, characters here. One's going to have a different sand of their color. You get these little tiles here. A, B, C. Loot tiles. These are important when you die, when you die and you leave, or you leave loot on the inner room. You drop stuff. And of course, the entrance tile, which is the one you start in the middle of the board with. It's only one sided, so you can tell which one it is. But it's also got all the connections ready for it to be put together. Encounters um, that go through 1 to 10. Different all the colors of the players. You only get four of these. These are including the expansion. You get these looted out tiles and ransacked tiles. Two color standard dice for each color. A uh, six colored cube die. And a ten sided die. And then the cards. For the cards, you're going to have the treasure decks, which is all kinds of stuff from boots of butt kicking, scrolling of opening the way, sneaky bastard sword, and then the monster cards, which stuff like leprechaun, 3,879 orcs, snails on speed, and last but not least, the DMX card, where you get your class cards, your warrior cards, and other things that you can play on your components. So, and if you want to know, I use the Ultra Pro, not the Yu-Gi-Oh size ones, but the um, standard playing card sizes. So, let's go into full play. They're, con uh, they're colors munchkin, they're dice, they're level counter, and plastic bases. A starting hand of three treasure cards and three DMX cards, four health tokens, three move tokens, and 300 gold pieces each. So, instead of getting all this out, I'm going to kind of go to the full play here. So, now, unlike some games where you roll die to move, your movement is based on how many hearts you have, uh, how many feet you have. And you start off with, uh, I believe, three feet. In order, to, in order to see if you can move, you look at these little numbers here on the outside of the board. It says one, so it costs you one move to go from here to there. So, blue is going to go first. So, someone decides to pull out a random tile and you place it on the board. He's going to be in a library. Randomly select these little link tiles. They go on the ends of each of the, uh, the rooms. He's in that room. So, he'll then take the top card in the monster deck, flip it over, and it's a potted plant. Now, once you determine who the monster is, you grab the dice, you roll it, it's the purple, purple, there's no purple player, so the blue gets to choose who he wants to have control of the monster. Well, he decides that he's going to make himself the target of the monster. So, he gets that, he explored any room, so he gets to take a card from the DM deck. Now, if his color would have came up, 
he get a DM card. So anytime your color comes up on this die, or a free DM card, it's kind of like a bonus for those that are going to be facing danger. Because when your monster matches your color, if they stop, they stop in the room where um where that color is, so it ignores all movements. If it's in a room with you, it ain't gonna move. Then the player will get their die. One of them, unless there's a bonus for wizards. Or he, he's a human, so he only had no special classes. His what? He had no weapons in his hand, so he's a level one f person. Um, and the plant's a level one potted plant. So there's extra elves draw an extra card after feeding it. You're a plus one to run away. If this unlikely event that you cannot escape from the potted plant, you lose a level. So level one, he really doesn't have to worry about it. So, but in this game, unlike regular mansion, if you can't deal with the bad stuff, you you take another hit. So if you fail to beat a monster, you take a hit, and then plus the bad stuff, you can't meet the bad stuff, you take a hit. So. So the monster, the players decide they have nothing that he can add to boost his character up. So once that, once the dice has been um, well, rolled, you cannot play any um, things to boost your level or the monster or anything like that. So he rolls a 4. So he's a level 1 plus 4. So he's 4. The monster is a level 3. It's 2 plus 1. So he gets 1 dice. This is all dice icon how dice the monsters roll. So, in theory, he beats the monster. He goes up a level. And he'll take one treasure fee. Whoever owns the monster <clears throat> can beef it up and get the roll for it. So, anyways, that's pretty much what happens. And each player is going to go explore rooms um, and flip tiles, you know, a time you flip in a room, you flip another tile over, and then you flip a monster, you can even search a room. So, let's say, to be honest, still he has a move, and he wants to search, he roll a die, and you get the six, so you can, and there's no bonuses to search room, you don't have anything that will bonus it, so, he'd get 300 gold pieces and a treasure card, the room is now ransacked. So, you take one of these little things, you slip on her. That's pretty much how you play Munchkin Quest, it's Now, my final thoughts on Munchkin Quest is uh, I really like this game. Uh, this game definitely sees a lot of playtime in our gaming group. It's a favorite because it's a really easy game to pick up and play. So unlike Munchkin where you, fl you flip over whatever it is, a door card, and you get nothing, you your turn ends. This one you keep going as long as you have movement left to do. Or you're dead. The game's really, really good game. It's... the um, it's, it's got a little bit of downtime to it, um, but it's not too bad because the downtime basically is that you're going to have to grab a tile, I'll fill the links up, find the monster, get them all sorted, and put them out on the table. And in alphabetical order, you can easily find the monsters. Uh, it's not a problem. I mean, uh, but yeah, it's there's nothing that beats a, a big gaming group of like a six players playing a, a game of Munching Quest. And the thing about this game is, unlike regular Munchkin, where you just toss potions and stuff at on a, uh, on a player, you can't play potions on someone. You can't, like, toss a potion when you're, like, six tiles away. You have to be adjacent or in the room. So if they beep up a monster and you can't beat it, it's going to be roaming around that board until someone kills it or it gets removed. So, yeah, this is definitely a really good game. So if you're into the dungeon crawl type games or you're a fan of D&D you know, &D and you don't want all that, uh, books and all that, all the different amounts of dice and stuff like that. This is really does a really good job of simulating that and it actually adds a lot of humor to it because there's so many different humorous monsters in there. Like the potted plant, I mean, where else would you be fighting in a game but a, a freaking plant that's, that's staying in the ground or a goldfish? I don't, you know, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, so anyways, that's my uh, th final thoughts on Mushroom Quest and uh, I really do recommend it, but like I said, it's not going to be for everyone if, you know, they don't like those kind of games, but if, if it seemingly it seems like everyone I introduced Munch and Quest to, they really enjoyed it a lot, so.